Philip, hi. Always have a pleasure to have you back. Today I'm looking at read and write, but I'm not going to go through every option. Because if I go to the top quickly, to the right of every option, you've got a little arrow pointing down. Left click it, and at the bottom it gives you a video tutorial of how to use that option. What I am going to show you today is the methodology of using some of the options. So today I'm going to be looking at the study skills options here, which is your colour banding, and fact folder. Just give you a few ideas of collecting information and doing research with it, and even checking words for your dictionary and vocabulary. Spell check. To spell check your document for spelling errors, so I'm going to close that. Check icon. And you've got those options on the right of each option to check out what that does individually. So if you get stuck, definitely worth a look at, and they're really good video tutorials. Last a couple of minutes, but they work really well. But what I want to look at quickly will be useful for you, these colour coding options here. Click the drop down arrow, we've got pink there as well. Just have a few little options there and fact folder I'm going to show you and what you can do with them. So first I'm going to open up a Word document. So say I'm doing a bit of work on the Battle of Hastings 1066. So I'm going to hold the left button and I'm going to drag my document and lock it into the left. And I might do a bit of research online. So I'm going to open up Internet Explorer. And I decide I want to do a bit of research off this website. Hold the left button at the top and drag it to the right to lock in. Now we two have two windows to work off now, so you're doing research. You might have an essay you've done or some information you've got in a Word document. And you've got some information on the internet we're doing your research. Now we need to come up the top here, we're going to use this colour coding to gather information from both documents and save them to one. Let me show you. So you might be going down this Internet Explorer article and decide you want some information on there, highlight it and select a colour. I'm just going to use yellow, it doesn't really matter which colour you use, you can use the colour to separate topics. And I might scroll down and decide, yep, again, I'm going to make that yellow. And as you're scrolling down you might decide you want to change the colour because it's something different that you want to separate. And I'm going to make that drop, drop down arrow and select pink. So you're gathering information online doing your research and you come back to your document, you might scroll down and go, actually that's quite relevant to that as well, that subject. So I'm going to make that all pink. Click the little drop down arrow and select pink. And you might scroll down and go, oh that's quite relevant to that option there, yellow. So again you highlight what you want, be a paragraph, a couple of sentences, and you choose your colour. And that's how you start gathering information. So I've got Internet Explorer on the right up, and I've got Word 2013 on the left. Now I want to collect all that information and put it into one document so I can work off it. Not a problem. Come up to the two little arrows here, left click them, and I want you to select Collect Highlights. Left click that, and this Collect Highlight windows will pop up. Now it's got green there, but you can see I'm not using green or blue for the moment. I can untick them or leave them there. It's not going to collect any information because I've not highlighted anything in that. So it makes really no difference. So I've got my yellow and my pink. So your yellow might refer to some topic and your pink might refer to another topic. But I'm going to collect them both. Now you can choose to export them to a Word document highlights by the colour format, yellow being first. Or you might decide when you actually got those highlights collection time or all the highlights by positioning document. It's entirely up to you how you want to work that. I'm just going to leave it by colour. You've got option here, colour collection separation. So as it collects them you can separate them using column breaks, page breaks and again goes for highlighted item separation. Choose your format. Now really important option here is by default this is off. Collect highlights from multiple documents. Well, we are collecting highlights from Word and Internet Explorer. You notice it says here Internet Explorer and MS Word only. So you can't use Google or Firefox. But I will check that, see if there's an update on that or a plugin that enables you to do that. But for the moment, I don't think it does. Though you can still use Google to collect highlights and stuff if you need to when you're doing research, which I'll show you in a minute. So I'm going to select that. Include bibliography. So we're going to include a bibliography. MLA if you say you're doing an English degree, APA for psychology or Harvard which is more generic. So I'm going to leave it on Harvard, click OK. Now so collect all that information put it into one Word document. And there we go, if I scroll down, we can see yellow which I chose first, and then pink underneath for the information both Internet Explorer and Word, and underneath I've got the bibliography source where I got it from. 
So we've got here the source from the internet and here the source from Microsoft document and both when I assess them all gathered in one document. Now if you don't want the colours on there, not a problem, Control A to highlight all. You can clear them by going to the right and selecting clear highlights or just come up to your highlight option here, click the arrow and select no colour. Entirely up to what you do. Just a great way to gather all your research and information into one document. Just for having to copy and paste, don't save. So I'm going to close all those Word documents and get rid of them. And go back to Internet Explorer, click the refresh button to get rid of the colours. Now that's one option, gathering information for multiple documents. How about if you're just doing research online? Now this is Internet Explorer. I'm going to open up Google. Let's show you working on Google. I'm going to pop in there history 66. And I'm going to choose first option. So now I've got the same option open in Google. So scroll down, highlight what you want again, and again choose colours. So again, when you're doing research online, just highlight what you want and separate your topics using different colours by colour band in it. And I'll do one more at the bottom here because we haven't used the green yet, I don't think. And there we go. So you could open another tab and carry on doing your research. But if you want to gather your information, click the two little arrows again and select Collect Highlights. Again, I don't want to collect highlights from Internet Explorer and MS Word. Even if they're closed, I I don't want it accidentally gathering that information, so I'm going to untick that so it only takes it from Internet Explorer, Google or Firefox. I'm going to change my bibliography this time to APA and leave everything default. Again, the colours don't matter because I'm not using pink, so it won't be exported anyway, it doesn't exist. Click OK. And there you go. I've taken everything from the internet and there's the link for it as well. Excellent, excellent option if you want to use that. And I'm going to clear it this time by using the clear option there. So there's a couple of things you can use those colours for. But if I close that document, because they're, they're hidden away to the right hand corner, a lot of people kind of neglect them and don't use them. But such a powerful option. So I'm going to open up Internet Explorer. And I'm going to use an option here called Fact Folder if I hover over it. Now this works kind of the same way as the study skills I showed you on the right, except it stores your information into folders so you can assess them at a later date for your research. Really good option. Let me show you. So you've been doing a bit of research, claims to the throne, and you decide I'm going to use that paragraph, maybe use that paragraph part of my research. Come up and left click the fact folder icon. A window will pop up. Again it will give you a standard title. I mean, if you don't want that title it's not a problem. You can put the title of the actual article in, which you really need to do anyway. And there we go, claims to the throne. Put your date in and the author of the article. So I'm actually going to copy that. Or Control C and Control V. Now, important part here is your source. You see, it's automatically got your source in there and it's ticked. So I want you to go to categories, so you need to create categories. So I've got my folder there already, but you can add additional folders. So I could just put here, history folder, BBC, and click OK. So I want all that information I'm gathering to go into that folder, and click OK. You could add a description if required, click OK, bottom right it comes up to say you've now got that information, it's been added. While I'm on this website, I might actually decide I want an image. There's an image there that I might want to add to the article. I'm going to grab that anyway. This time, click to the right of the fact folder. Drop down menu, select add web image and left click it. Window pops up on the right. Now you need to hover over the image you want. So as I'm hovering over, it's bringing up images. But I want this image. See it's come up bottom right. If I left click, it will now bring up a window say I've added it. So you can give a name to the picture if you want. The date's fine, the author if you want it again, the link's there, and the category really important. So I'm going to add it to the history folder, same as the other one. Add a description if you require, click OK. So now come up bottom right hand corner and say I've gathered that information. So now, if I come back at a later date, I click to the right of the fact folder, 
and you've got an option there called review facts. Left click it and it should have all my facts stored for now and previous date. So as you see I've got four in there. So if I maximise I've got four in there. I've got that image there. So that's what I want. I want that. And I choose the text that I want as well. So I'm going to use that in this case. Anything you don't want, not a problem. You can click on it and use the delete option here. And you can delete what you don't want. Also if you require, you can acquire a new fact by clicking that. Pops up if you want to acquire a new one. And you've got an option here where you can actually edit one. So we have highlighted claims. If I click the edit button, it brings me up the option to edit that as well. But I'm actually going to send that to Word. If I click the drop down menu, there's all my facts in my fact folder. But as I've only ticked these two, these are the only two it's going to export to Word. Choose your bibliography format. This time I should do MLA and click OK. And it should now export those facts to a Word document. So now if I minimise fact folder, it should be underneath. And there we go. There's my information, my image, and my bibliography reference list at the bottom. So you see it works kind of the same way as it does with the study skills top right hand corner, but it stores them in folders, which is a great option when you go back to them at a later date instead of having bookmarks everywhere. So I'm going to close that. I'm going to show you one more thing with the study skill colour options top right. Now you can read an article, you could highlight it and have read and write read it back by clicking the play button. It all began with the death of Edward the Confessor in January. Use the up and down cursor to slow it down or speed it up. January 1066, the Bilks Tapestry depicts. Now you might come across a word you're not too sure about, so why not highlight it, double tap the word, and choose a colour. Again, colours don't matter here. What you're doing is you're highlighting specific words you might not understand to create your own vocabulary list that you can refer to at a later date for that article or topic. Really, really cool option. Carry on going and you might cite tapestry is another word you're not too sure about. And you get the idea and go through and you come across words you're not too sure of the definition. Just highlight it and choose a colour. So when you finish we need to gather that and create a vocabulary list. Well again no problem. Come to the right again with those arrows. This time we're not going to collect the highlights. We're going to use the vocabulary button. Left click it and there's the words that I've highlighted. And if you require, you can add words if you want. So, let's add... How about propaganda? And then click Add. It'll only add a word that's actually spelled correctly, so you know if it's spelled or not. You probably copy and paste it if you want to do that as well. We need to get the subject title for our vocabulary list. In this case, I'm just put History. Depends how many modules you're doing in subjects you've got. And I've just put 1066. Now, Choose whether you want to include images. So when it exports it to a Word document, it will give you an image to try and explain what that word means. So it's to help you identify the word and understand it. So if I click OK and wait for it to populate, and let's have a little look what we've got. And there we go. So I've got Confessor. I've also got Tapestry here. So if I click on the beginning of Tapestry, and put something that resembles and I click play it will then play back something that resembles a tapestry and it's complex and click pause if you want to pause it click pause again so you can hear the definition of the word as well as have the definition and the meaning and if possible give you an image and then you can add your additional notes to that word if you require in the fourth box and then you can save that to wherever you want file save as and you've got your own vocabulary list of words for different topics or subjects. Another real powerful option and that's just using the colour code in here, collect highlights vocabulary and your and using your fact folder there. Hope that was a bit of help. Thanks for watching.